All right, so before we go and start hooking up the linkage here between the uh, lock servo and the latch here, I just wanted to show you how this is originally intended to work. So here's our servo, and the way this kit is designed is you're supposed to take this rod that comes with the kit, and that would hook into the, into the servo like so, okay? And then this rod comes up and it attaches to this little, this little adapter piece that they, that they include. So this would slide up onto here. There's a set screw that allows you to lock this in place. Then you take your original door lock rod and then that actually just slides into the side here like so. So then you can take these two and they would be connected like this. Well, since we used this rod for the latch mechanism, and I chose this rod because of, it's a slightly smaller diameter to fit where I had to drill my hole, I'm going to use this, this steel rod here. Now, this is just an old Volkswagen door latch rod. It just happens to be the exact correct size to fit this adapter. So what we'll do is we'll take this and we will make our connection between the servo and the new lock rod that we put in there. So we'll go ahead, we'll get the servo mounted, we'll get the door latch mounted, and then we can adjust this rod. So we'll, we'll shape this rod to fit in the door. Alright, so the latch is in. Now we can go ahead and get started on the on the servo mount here. And for that, I'm just gonna push this out of the way so we can see what's going on. The servo needs to be mounted low enough that it doesn't interfere with this with window track mount. And so I'm going to extend the servo fully, and then we're going to make sure that we drop this down low enough that it's not gonna interfere with that. And I found that if I just simply center it, the actual servo portion here, if I center that with this new tab that I added for the windows, that's gonna give me plenty of, plenty of clearance on the, on the top side. So now we just need to make a plate to mount the servo to that will then mount in the door. So I want the servo to be all the way out to this outside edge and then we can, we'll make a plate that's gonna stick off of here and it's gonna attach in this portion. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a, a plate made up here. Well, all right, so off camera, I went ahead and made a bracket that's going to mount our uh, solenoid or our servo um, to the door. Because I need this to be actually towards the outside of the door frame here, and I can't be screwing into that. That's, again, what this bracket's for. So what we'll do is the, the bracket will screw to the, to the servo, and then I've threaded the bracket, uh, and we just have to drill a couple of holes in the frame here. One issue we have is because I put this tab on here for the power window motor, it actually sticks out be, beyond the surface of the, of the door here. So I simply just took a couple of a couple of pieces of uh, steel that's the same thickness as this tab and just tack welded those in place to create spacers. So they're just like little standoffs. So now when I put this back here, it'll actually sit flush to the, to the door frame and allows us to tighten things up. So now all we have to do is drill a couple of holes for the bolts. And then one last thing we have to do when I have this bolted on here, you'll notice that this hole right here is actually for the door panel clip. <clears throat> and it's got these little rubber gaskets that pop in there. Once I get this bolted on there, I do have to mark the location for this hole and I have to drill a clearance hole in the bracket. That way the little rubber plug and the door panel clip has a place to, place to go. Otherwise it'll be right up, right up tight to that. So first things first, we're just gonna go ahead and get our holes marked. We'll get this. We'll get this laid in here. Drill our holes, 
and then uh, mark that hole, get that drilled, and we should be able to get the solenoid mounted up right after that. So I got my bracket mounted up here and everything's fitting just the way we wanted it to. Last thing we're going to do here is mark this hole for the trim bracket. I'm just going to use a sharpie for that. And now when we drill this hole, we're just going to drill it oversized just so it's quite a bit larger than this hole just to make sure we've got plenty of clearance for that, uh, that panel snap. All right, so our bracket just simply is going to attach like this. A couple of screws that were included in the kit and this will go together pretty pretty quickly here. So we'll just and now that's ready to go in the car. And before I went and before I decided to bolt this in the car, I went ahead and prepped my push rod that's going to be used here. Quite simply, I just took this rod that we looked at earlier and I just bent a U in it. And that U is just the right width. So when I hook it on here, it's not going to fall off and there's no no discernible side to side play. So now this is ready to ready to go. We still have to cut this to length, but we'll get the solenoid mounted and then we'll mark what length we want this to be. Get that cut and then the last step is we're gonna have to uh, avoid a few obstacles with this. But let's get the solenoid in, let's get this in and marked to length and then uh, we'll make our final adjustments. All right, so now our solenoid should just slip right in here. Just get those snugged up and there we have it. So our solenoid is now mounted in place. Right now, the rod that goes up to the door lock, and I want to make sure it's in the full up position, ends right here. But the latch mechanism is right here. Now this is an awfully long stretch for that really small diameter rod. I would much rather have this run the length. I need to be able to get in here with a screwdriver so I can adjust the actual lock rod. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to make this the maximum height that I can go. And if I line this up with the, the eyelet on the on the solenoid, since that's the max height that I want it, I want the adjustment lug to go. We'll go ahead and put a mark there, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at about this length here, so it's up above. So I know I'm gonna have plenty of, of adjustment here. And then we can position that lug wherever we want within this, within this length. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this guy cut off and then we'll continue on with our adjustments. All right, so this is now where things get interesting. So with the solenoid or the servo in place here, 
I just need to connect that to my other rod, which is right up here. I know it's gonna be kind of hard to see what's going on in here. So with the lock rod installed on the servo, the problem I'm gonna run into is actually this, this brace right here for this window track. It's too far this way, and the rod, I know it's hard to see, is actually angled that way. It's running into this. It's not a huge deal. What we're gonna do is we're just going to adjust the rod and we're gonna kink it to go around this, this little brace here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this in the all the way up position and I'm gonna put a little mark at the bottom of this, of this brace. So now, when I remove that, that, that mark right there signifies the bottom of this brace. And what we're gonna do is we're just simply going to bend this over, up, back over, and then up. So it'll have a little bow in it that's gonna clear this guy here. So I'm gonna start by, by making this first first bend here. With that, I'm just going to go ahead and rehook this. And now it has plenty of clearance. I'm now gonna push the solenoid down into its full lock position, and then I'm gonna mark the top of this brace. So now if I remove this, this mark now signifies the top of this brace when it's in the down position. I just wanna make sure that I put my bend above that, so again, it doesn't run into, into what's going on here. We still need to make a few tweaks here, but the important thing is that you have a straight line from this side to this side. This kink doesn't matter. If you imagine we were to draw a straight line all the way down, then this is, this is all connected. So now, we'll go ahead and slip this back in, see how we're doing, and then we'll tweak and adjust to get things actually the way that we need them to but we'll do some test fitting. So there's gonna be a lot of put it together, take it apart. All right, so now that I've got this hooked in here, uh, again, it's a little hard to see, but this now runs around this brace and it doesn't hit. And it allows this to come and run parallel with the lock rod from the latch mechanism. So that's, that's good to go. So now the next step is to grab the little junction block that connects those two pieces. All right, so here's my, my little junction block. And so what'll happen is this will slide up onto my small diameter rod that's attached to the door latch. And then this slot here will actually index over this, this rod that we just put in. So we'll get this slid up onto here. All right, so with that, Adjustment linkage in place here. This is now moving up and down fairly smoothly. I still think we need to make a few tweaks to get things in the proper position. But I'm gonna run a quick test here and make sure that we've got everything going in the right direction. So I'm just simply going to connect all of the electronics here. So we'll just temporarily connect all that and then I'm gonna go ahead and get it connected to the other door as well, so we can test and see how things are working. Well, all right, here we go. So we've got the rod connected. Uh, it does still need a little bit of adjustment, like I mentioned, but that's okay. Uh, at least it's functioning right now. We'll come back and tweak it after the fact, but you can see up top here, we've got the adjustment lug. Those screws are tight. 
it's hooked down in here and this is the best view you're going to get of this little jog as the rod goes around this brace here. But what I can do now is reach over to the passenger door and we'll lock that and you'll see the actual function here. So if I lock the passenger door, and you see that goes ahead and pops down and if I unlock the passenger door, we're good to go. So, so that's it. So again, we do need to do some tweaking just to make sure everything is functional. But right now, we're almost there. Well, all right, so we've got the solenoid in place. I've got everything kind of just very, very roughly wired up here. And I went ahead and hooked up the remote system because that's the whole reason we're doing this. And I've got the window track back in place to make sure that that's gonna clear the lock rod. I do need to push this hose back in place, but we'll do that after the fact here. But now we'll just run a, we'll just run a test here. And if I hit the unlock button, the door unlocks and locks. So we, we are good to go. So that's, that's it. We've got our power windows installed. I'm gonna have to go ahead and get that all put back together here, but we know that that already works. We've got our power windows installed. We now have our power locks installed. And really the last step is to go ahead and get power run through the, the door jam and then we're done. So then all of our modifications on the door will be complete. So all in all, uh, really not a bad couple of days worth of work here. So now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get the glass put back in, uh, make sure I get everything final adjusted, make sure it's gonna work correctly, and then, uh, and that's it, we're all finished.